This video is about adding integers or real numbers. So let's first of all talk about what a real number is. A real number is any number that can be shown on a number line. So here are some examples of real numbers. 2 is a real number. 5.1 is a real number. Negative 4.5 is a real number. Negative 2 thirds is a, num a real number. 5 thirds is a real number. These are all examples of integers. Now, we often um, call the 5.1 and the um, 5.3 and the, or 5 thirds and the negative 2 thirds and the negative 4 and a half. We often call those by another subset of the real numbers called the rational numbers. But they are indeed real numbers because we can put them on a number line. Somewhere on that number line we will find these numbers. When we talk about the real numbers and we want to use a symbol, we use this funny looking R. So it's kind of like an R with an extra line through it. And that symbolizes that I'm talking about the real numbers. And the integers are part of those real numbers. You see an integer here, 2, and I could write another integer that was a negative one, right? Negative 3 is an integer, and that's um, the a negative one and a positive one, and then I could also talk about another integer, zero, and all those are examples of real numbers too. And that's what it means to be a subset. A subset is a part of another thing. So we have this group of numbers, and the integers are a part of that group. So we're going to talk about adding on a number line. So when we learn how to add, we know that we start out with something and then we go and get we, we get more of that thing. So in order to add on a number line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to move to the right the first number on the, um, in the addition problem, which by the way is called an add end. And so I'm going to move this way five places. Now I really like to do a little jump here and count one, two, three, four, five, I like it better that way, but the arrows are something that I actually need to show you the concept. And then I go to the second add end and I say, okay, I'm going to move two more places. There's one and there's two. And so now I end up at the real number seven. And so five plus two more equals seven. This is kind of like the same idea as counting on our fingers and our toes, right? We count one, two, three, four, five fingers, and then one, two more, and then we have, ah, seven um, held up. So that is the same idea. Now, if I'm subtracting on a number line, we can do the same thing. So we're going to move to the first one. So I'm going to move one, oops, one, two, three, four, and five. And again, I prefer to do the um, I prefer to do the little hop skips there to show exactly that I've moved five, but it doesn't show us quite so well what's going on here. So this is five. And now from there, I'm going to move back this second number. This is called the menu end. This one's called the subtrahend. So I'm going to move back the number of times by the subtrahend, which is 2. And that, I've gone backward, and now where I end up is 3. And that is what we call the difference between these numbers. So this is like we say, okay, we have five fingers held up, and we count down two of them, and how many do we still have left held up? That's the same sort of idea. So adding integers can be done on a number line too. And what we do is we move from zero to the first add end, and then we move from the first add end, the distance and the number indicated um, distance and the direction, I should say there, um, indicated by the number. So you move from the first add end, the distance and the direction indicated by the second add end and then you write your answer. So let's go ahead and practice that. So if I have negative 2 plus negative 3, I'm going to start at 0, and a negative indicates that I'm traveling in the negative direction, so I'm going to go to the left, 1 and 2. And then from there, it says I'm going to travel a negative 3 more. So that's 1, 2, and 3 more. And you see that where I end up is at negative 5. So my answer is negative 5. 
So the next one here, I'm going to start out at going negative 1. So I start at 0, and I travel, and I travel negative 1. And then from there, it says I'm going to go positive 3. So from here, I go 1, 2, and 3. And we see that we end up here, which is at positive 2. So the negative 1 plus positive 3 is positive 2. One more time, we start out at 0, and we're going to go in the negative direction, 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then from there, we travel back to the positive direction, 2. And that puts us at this point, which is negative 2. So we have that negative 4 plus, ne uh, plus positive 2 is negative 2. One more time. We start out at 0, and we travel in the negative direction, 2. And then we travel in the positive direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And that puts us right there at positive 3. So negative 2 plus positive 5 is equal to positive 3. So some things that you probably should know. When the signs are the same, what happens to the arrows? Well, let's go take a look. What do you see? Here the signs are the same, so what's happening with the arrows? Over here, the signs were the same. What happened with the arrows? Here and here. What did you see? Did you say that the arrows went in the same direction? Okay, so they went in the same direction. We'll put that down. Okay, and now let's observe what happens when the signs are different. So here's a different, here's one arrow, here's the other arrow. Let's see again. Here's one, one sign's po a negative, one's positive. So here's one arrow, here's the other. One's negative, one's positive. Here's one arrow, here's the other. Hmm, well, what happens? If you said that these go in the opposite directions, you're absolutely right. Now, let's relate that back to what we did at the very beginning with adding and subtracting. So when we did our addition and subtraction, how, what did we do? Well, let's go back here and let's take a look at it. So here we were with adding. Oops. Here we were with adding, right? So look, the arrows went the same way, and we just added the numbers up and put them together. And then when they were subtracting, one arrow was going one direction, one was going the other. So we were subtracting, we we're finding the difference between these two values. So when we have the same signs, this is going to lead us to a rule. When we have the same signs, we're going to ignore the signs, we're going to add the numbers, and we're going to attach the common sign. So this ignore the signs, that's really what the absolute value is. So that's another way of stating just ignore the signs, make the absolute value. So I'm going to say I'm not going to pay attention to the negative signs, I'm just going to say it's 13 plus 15, and now you're going to see how I do this with symbols. I say like that, and then after I add it, remember parentheses, they say do that first, then I say I'm going to attach the common sign, that negative sign. So I add the numbers first, 28, and then I attach the common sign, negative 28. All right, now what happens when the signs are unlike? Well, we subtracted the numbers, right? So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to note which number is bigger, so we're going to basically take the absolute value, and we're going to take the bigger absolute value minus the smaller one, and then we're going to attach the sign of the bigger one. So we have 30, negative 35 and positive 40. They're opposite signs, right? So we're going to take the big one, and we're going to subtract the smaller one. Okay, 
the difference of them, see how far apart they are, and then I'm going to see which one has the bigger sign, or what the sign of the bigger one is. So 40 is bigger, right? It's out front, so I'm going to put a positive in here. And 40 minus 35 is 5, and there we go. So that is our answer. And that is adding integers. So I'll do another video where we're going to add integers with the rules, and then after adding integers with the rules, we're going to explore subtraction of integers.